WWE stars potentially returning to the company. Ronda Rousey going off on the company. So much we got to talk about right here on The Ango Show. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, we got a giveaway at 100K, but you know what's more important? Wrestling news. Let's talk about it. Triple A in the chase for a championship. A championship? What? No, a TV deal. That's right, a TV deal. So Conan was talking about this on the latest K100 podcast. Whether you like or hate Conan, who knows what is truthful here, but I think this is a good thing for wrestling if it were to happen. Essentially, he's talking about it on his podcast where in the years past, he was trying to, you know, they were trying to get a TV deal for AAA. Obviously, the pandemic happened. That's why they didn't get it. Things fell, you know, flat, whatever. Then he says, until we get our TV deal and we can give people the proper compensation like Tony Khan does, we are going to lose them to him in regards to free agents, right? Once we get a TV deal, a lot of people that aren't being used right over there or anywhere will come back home because they know they will be used right by us. Now, obviously, a lot of people don't know this, but Vikingo is not signed to AEW, but he has been working a lot in AEW. Vikingo is signed to AAA, and he's currently out with an injury. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because with AAA, I like to think that them having a TV deal would actually be really good for pro wrestling because, like Conan says, they would probably lose less talent to AEW. But also, it would be a destination for people to actually go and work and, and, and you know, be on TV in America. Like, that's huge. It's one thing to wrestle. It's another thing to wrestle on TV, especially if you could have weekly TV. Now, with that being said, I think visibility is important. Impact has a TV deal, but Access TV isn't the greatest TV network. But it makes sense for Impact to be there because Anthem owns Impact. Ultimately, we need a third company to be on a major television network. And I like to think that maybe Paramount is that sweet spot. Now, this is an old rumor. I read it before a long time ago. Don't know if there was ever any truth to it. I never seen anybody confirm it or just simply deny it. But there was a rumor at one point in time that Paramount Plus was going to try and offer Triple A Mania, right? Triple Mania. Uh, they were going to offer that event as a one-time thing on Paramount Plus and see what the viewership and stuff like that would be like. Now, I remember at the time when I heard about the rumor that it was completely erroneous, I remember thinking there was no way that would be possible because typically companies don't like to do one-time events. They like to have, you know, actual like content where it's an overflow. Um you know, every week there's something, right? Or every day if possible. So the more content, obviously the better. I remember not thinking that it was possible, but at the same time too, Paramount does have a history with wrestling. And I kind of wonder if maybe Triple A bringing Triple Mania to a network like that, if it would be possible. I think no matter what, wrestling on more TV networks is good. And it is better for competition. The reality is Tony Khan and Triple Triple H, they both have the two top companies in wrestling, right? They both are AEW, WWE, WWE, AEW. Then there is Impact and MLW, GCW, NWA. There's a whole bunch of other ones, but they're a lot smaller, and they'll never be on the size of WWE and AAA. With that being said, AAA is extremely popular in Mexico. In the West Coast of the United States, AAA is also incredibly popular. Um, so I do think there is a need for AAA to be on TV. How they go about it, I don't know. I just don't want to see them do the New Japan anthem thing where you know it's on Access TV because I think that would be stupid. But I've always kind of predicted that would be the case. Let's keep it moving. Ronda Rousey going off on WWE. Uh, good for her, to be honest with you. I think she she's a very prominent name in not only pro wrestling, but in MMA and, and just in general pop culture at this point. Ronda Rousey changed women's MMA. But I thought this was interesting because in her autobiography, she says, uh, it's hard to sometimes know where the evil unethical slimeball character of Vince McMahon played out for the camera's ends and the actual questionably ethical many times sued and multiple times accused of sexual misconduct Vince McMahon begins. She also wrote that the blurred line is a reoccurring theme within the WWE universe. She says that WWE bills itself as a sports entertainment organization. And just like in the mainstream entertainment industry, there was by all accounts a casting couch culture where men backstage in powerful positions pressured female talent for sexual favors in return for airtime. That is absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Now, Ronda Rousey is in a situation where she is one of the biggest 
athletes in the world, right? Like she's one of the most popular and she's come to WWE. And there was always this belief that Ronda Rousey and WWE, like everything was A1. Everything was great, right? And that's what's portrayed out in front of you. Now she's talking about this stuff publicly. Keep in mind, she's also been very, 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 very much out there talking about John Laurinaitis and Bruce Prichard. She clearly does not like them. And you have to wonder, obviously, Ronda Rousey does not work for TKO. Ronda Rousey does not work for Ari Emanuel, and she doesn't work for these people that are in charge. So obviously, you have to take that into consideration. She is very much talking about the old regime. But I want to make sure that everybody understands here that TKO has to make sure that anybody who was involved in that stuff needs to be gone. Gone from the company. There's no excusing it. And if you are somebody trying to excuse it, shame on you. It, it is fantastic that Ronda Rousey is speaking up about it because ultimately at the end of the day, what you need to understand is that while John Laurinaitis and Vince aren't there, there are people from that regime still there. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. I want to turn our attention to our final topic of today. We got to see how this unfolds. Just a few weeks ago, we talked about Matt Cardona reportedly coming to WWE. The same source who disclosed that information is now reporting that WWE may be bringing back the Iconics. Slice Wrestling is reporting in a new exclusive report that potentially the Iconics could be coming back to WWE. Now, I have to say, we haven't seen Matt Cardona come back. I don't know if Slice is going to be credible when it comes to these returns, which is exactly why I'm putting this information out there. It is important that when we talk about different news sources, if we're going to talk about Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez, and we're going to talk about Fightful, and we're going to talk about Boozer, and we're going to talk about all these, all of this different information, there have been stories in the past that Slice Wrestling has dropped that were found to be accurate. Now, with that being said, I have to make it very clear. I would love nothing more than the Iconics to come back. It also makes sense because Ty Dillinger, a.k.a. Sean Spears, is back in the company. And obviously his wife is Peyton Royce. So it could make a lot of sense that they find their way back into the company. It would also be great if they found their way back into the company because of the fact that the women's tag team division is actually kind of like on TV and it's actually a big thing now. Do they go singles? Do they go tag team? They should be in the tag division. My point that I'm making is if WWE brings back the Iconics, I'm happy. Now, granted, you know, having kids, having these personal brands, these podcasts, it seems like they're doing pretty well for themselves outside of WWE. They don't need the WWE, right? But if WWE is trying to build, build some value in that women's tag division, you know, this would be a good time, whenever the time might be. I, I would very much be supportive of this decision. Um, I would actually also be supportive of them going to AEW as, as they're kicking up their women's division again as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. I think it's really cool. Um, if it happens, awesome. If not, trust me, guys, We you know how I cover things. It's always fair on this channel. So this is one of those stories I want us to actually wait and see what happens, and we'll see if it goes down the way it's being reported. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching The Angle Show.